I have a brief uh, presentation that I like to show, and then I'll hand it over to our uh, software engineer Sam so that he can show the system in a brief demo environment with a brief uh, demo session, and then we can continue with our question and answer uh, section of our webinar. So when we look at Beam, uh, Beam is actually an asset maintenance, energy, and facility management system. The system is modular, and it is ready to integrate with any uh, system. It's open to communicate with other systems. Could be an ERP system, could be an NES system, could be GPS, CADA, or RFID. Uh, in this particular case, we have a pretty uh, effective uh, and working smoothly, basically, an um, integration with the PDX system. So PDX basically remotely monitor the health of the machine, machinery. And uh, when the time comes for uh, the maintenance beforehand, months before, triggers the beam for maintenance operations and beam basically prepares the team, material, and the schedule for the maintenance operations. So just like uh, Dr. Siegel and Dr. Abuali mentioned, the idea is to have smooth manufacturing operations without having any unplanned uh, breakdown. That is the main idea. Instead of uh, fixing what is actually breaking down, we basically uh, maintain the machinery before anything breaks down. Beam is is coming with a with a workflow engine, so all the activities can be subject to an approval, and uh, all the users could be an admin user, could be a regular user, could be an operator at the machine, uh, can basically uh, be a part of uh, this system. And Beam has more than 10,000 admin reports, uh, meaning any activities in uh, maintenance operations can be basically uh, reported and the performance activities can be basically uh, managed and observed and you can take action. Uh, here is the key benefit of uh, Beam. So based on what we have been learning from our clients, our clients manage to reduce maintenance costs 15 to 20 percent once they deploy Beam. And uh, our clients manage to reduce failure 40 to 80 percent so these are big ROIs big feature big benefits of, of, of beam if you think about it in a manufacturing organization reducing the cost of maintenance activities and reducing the uh, unplanned breakdowns is a huge benefit for any manufacturing organization uh, as I mentioned earlier beam is modular Sim simply what beam does is putting three things together man machine and material just like a production operation uh, Beam has the same mentality, same algorithm underneath. Uh, based on the basic modules that we have, it comes with asset management, maintenance management, spare part management, and personnel management. What I mean by uh, maintenance management is periodic, preventive, and predictive maintenance. And predictive maintenance is basically uh, linked to PDX. Uh, and we can also link to any machinery uh, that's actually generating data on a rule base to get the temperature or vibration kind of uh, observations and information on a basic uh, rule-based uh, system to automate the maintenance operations. In addition to the basic module, there is a purchase management module, energy management module, server sector sales module, and dashboard module. And we'll show you in a minute uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this webinar. Uh, BIM is multi-language, multi-currency, and multi-location. Multi location meaning once we deploy Beam, you can simply access the system uh, from wherever you are, simply anywhere uh, via web browser. And the system is ready to be used in different languages. Uh, you can easily utilize multi currency capabilities of the system. There is also mobile app available. So, what happens is most of the time in the maintenance management um, team, these team members, most of the time, they're, in, they're on the manufacturing floor. Uh, production floor. So uh, it's hard to get them on at their desk. So this kind of tool is a mobile app, using it on tablet or mobile app basically is going to increase the uh, productivity of the uh, maintenance team. So you can easily decrease maintenance with the help of the mobile app. You can take pictures while you are, you are at it uh, when you are requesting maintenance. You can also check the checklist if you are doing the maintenance yourself. You can access the calendar to see the shift, see the shift and, and maintenance uh, scheduling in terms of what is coming next. Uh, there are many references of Beam, uh, International Paper, Hankel, Unilever, LG are some of them. 
Uh, also, uh, we have uh, Barilla in food industry, we have Amkar is in, in packaging industry, some of our references. And uh, our references are available in many different locations globally. So in a nutshell, Beam as an enterprise level asset and maintenance management system, I just mentioned, I just shared with you some information about its capabilities in terms of benefits and features. So uh, what I like to do is that I like to hand it over to Sam Watt. He's a pre software engineer at Beam International, and Sam will be showing you uh, a brief demonstration of Beam as a maintenance and asset management system, and you'll have an idea of uh, its capabilities and how it can help you manage your maintenance management and asset management activities. Sam, I'll make you the presenter and please take it away. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay, and thank you for joining this webinar. And okay, and this is Sam of PIMSA International. So um, now I'm going to show you the uh, BIM, which is our enterprise asset and maintenance management system. This is how it looks like you log in into BIM, and you will have a dashboard on your home screen, which you can have your own design dashboard. Since all the widgets they are movable, you can move down around to the perfect place, and you can re resize it. And also, it is modifiable, which means you add or delete any widget if needed. And we can save it, and this is how you can get your own design dashboard. And besides, the, the widget can interact with each other, saying um, on the top left one, we can make a command like clicking on different location. You will see the real-time data will be changed accordingly. And this provides you a table form or in a pie chart or in a bar chart or just a number on the widget. So it helped you um, and give you a better way to keep an eye on your KPI and the performance of your company. And then we can go to the top left and have our all of our available module. So we first of all go into the asset module and right here, we have a map function that showing you a real Google map, which you can zoom in and out. And we can pinch point the location of your company. And once you move the cursor on the pinpoint, then you can have uh, some more information of this location. And also we can integrate your the GPS that equipped on your uh, machinery or moving asset. Then you can have the real time location of your um, moving equipment or moving asset like the truck. Then we can go to the graphical asset tree. And right here, by uploading the floor plan or the blueprint of your facilities or, or your company, we can pinpoint the location of your asset or machinery. And when you move the cursor on it, you will have the information like the name, the status, um, the department it belongs. And you will see they will they are in green color now, which means they are in a good condition. And once it turned into red, which means they are under maintenance. Also, we can click on it and get a quick access to have a work request, which means a maintenance request, or show the history of this asset or show the asset image. So what you're gonna see now on your screen is the asset tree. It shows the structure of your company in a hierarchy form and saying in this location, New York, and you will see this location have the asset show in this list. And also we can have the asset line here, which means we can combine two asset to perform uh, for a particular single task, saying I need a, 
in this example, it is a truck and the duty heavy, um, heavy duty crane. So we can combine them and make them into a parent and children relationship. Then we can go back to the asset list. So right here is save all the information of your asset. So we can also use the filter function here and get a quick access to the particular target um, asset. What you can, what information is stored in BIM is you can have the, of course, the name of the asset, the department and the serial, serial number and the buying price. Also, we can connect the material that will be used by this asset and some more information like the legitimate information for example, insurance or in the, the inspection information and the picture in BIM as well. You can upload it from, your, from the server or from your local computer. And all the handbook or manual can be attached right here under this documents field. After, and then you can click save and this asset will be saved in BIM and you can retrieve the data anytime you want. And as been providing over 10,000 ready-made report, so we can have a, our report generate in BIM. Saying uh, this is our asset status report and we can use the advanced filter on your left saying I limit the fields to New York location and click the prepare button. Then you will see all the status of your asset in New York location. And you can export this file to PDF, Excel, or images for sharing. And besides generate, you generate the report every time you need it, you can schedule this report to be sent by BIM automatically. With this configuration, you can choose if it is, um, you will receive the report daily, weekly, or monthly, and also have the time configuration here as well. Then we can go to the maintenance module. So right here, once the operational level employees or the staff find something wrong with the machinery, saying the machinery, then they can have a fast request right here and create a new work request um, right here. We're filling all the mandatory fields like uh, the priority, the asset code, and the type and some more information, supportive information. And after the work request is created so, and the control center or the supervisor or the managerial personnel can create a work order for the work request. So all the work requests you create will be pulled by the system to this uh, work order list automatically. And of course, you can create a new work order directly by clicking the add button and without any work request. So in the work week order, you can schedule the maintenance activities of this uh, work order. As you will see on the top right, there will be a plan start day and the plan end day. So saying uh, it's gonna happen on um, saying July 15th to July uh, 18th. Then we can assign this to a particular responsible person. And any services is needed, uh, we can at, uh, define it here, saying um, the services from vendor, subcontractor, or any third party. And we can have the material that will be used by this uh, maintenance activity. And all the courses will be calculated automatically right here. And you can have a better idea how this uh, maintenance activities cost to your company. So when we save it, it will be in the list and we can also have 
all the schedule on this work order calendar. This is the one we just created from July 15 to July 18. So we can click on it for truck 100 and show the detail of this uh, maintenance activities. And let's schedule a better idea how you assigned on the uh, maintenance activities in a calendar form. So besides having or arranging the maintenance activity any single time the problem comes out, we can do a preventive or the periodic maintenance right here. So by double clicking it, what you can do is you can define time period that you carry out the next maintenance day. Say um, they can be kind in day, week or month. So saying I will update it to 120 days and you will see the next maintenance date will be updated accordingly and automatically. And also the used material and the document can attach here for, and then we can save it and you will see this preventive maintenance will be shown in this list. And also, and then we can go to the material module right here under this material. You will see um, all the material that you have in your company will be saved here and put them into a list and you can add a new one by clicking this add button and you can have the information stored in BIM like the name, the code, the serial number and the brand, the model. Also, you can have the uh, document like the handbook and also the picture of this uh, material. Besides, we can define the warehouse parameter which means right here we can define the safety stock and it's helped you to keep the optimum stock or inventory of your uh, company. Say uh, the mass will be a hundred and the min is 10 and the safety stock will be 30. And then we can click this box to keep, um, to allow BIM keep checking on the minimum level. So once it's reached the minimum level, and BIM will send you a notification in the system and through the email. Then we can save it when everything is done. Okay. And also, besides um, keeping the record of the material, it is BIM also provide a function to keep tracking the activities or the transaction of the material, saying uh, it's incoming, withdrawing, or transfer from one warehouse to another warehouse, saying uh, we have more in material is coming in and then we can choose the location and the warehouse and choose which material is going to increase in quantity. So what you can do right here is uh, picking which material is going to having more in our warehouse and the quantity right here saying uh, it will be 45. And the unit price will be saying uh, $125 each. And you can change the currency right here to USD. And then we can save it. And you will see this transaction record will be shown in here. Then next will be the resource, the personnel module. So right here we can add a new uh, employees or edit the personal information of the employee. So you can have the name, department, the shift and the wage and also attach the picture of the employees and some more personal information like address, education and work experience can also be stored in BIM. And then we also have this resource occupation calendar. So it showed you all the tasks of uh, particular particular uh, employees in the calendar. So we can select them and query it. And besides showing the task that they have, we can compare the schedule of um, among the employee. 
so you have a better idea how they have their schedule is and uh, avoid conflict when you're assigning the task to a particular employee. So um, it's come to the end of the demonstration of BIM. So, and once again, thank you everyone and thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sam. Uh, it's been a pretty informative demonstration. Uh, short answer it. I think uh, attendees uh, get the idea of its uh, capabilities and its benefits. So we come to the Q&A session. Uh, I have been receiving also questions from attendees. Uh, so we'll be addressing those questions one by one. Also, just know that we put our contact information on the screen. So after this webinar, if you'd like to continue the conversation, if you'd like to uh, see a demo of our products, please feel free to uh, contact us. You have our phone numbers and email addresses on the screen uh, so that we can continue this conversation uh, and uh, we can see how we can help. So let me see what kind of questions that we have been receiving uh, in the chat box, in the private uh, box, as well as the public box. So one of the questions that I here receive is about actually um, predictive analytics. So this, the first question is, how accurate is your predictions? That is the first question. Uh, Dr. Siegel, would you like to address it? I think Dr. Siegel might be muted. Uh, Dr. Aboali, would you like to address it? Uh, sure, absolutely. Um, Thank you. So, I mean, the accuracy of the predictions um, also depend on the type of historical data that's been captured and uh, the type of uh, part or product that is being monitored. Um, of course, each prediction is sometimes is done at a 95% confidence interval. So there is a, there is a plus or minus deviation. Um, so depending on the type of model uh, that we are using, the uh, prediction accuracy, uh, of course, is impacted. Um, but let me see if David has more to add. Uh, David, are you back? Sorry, yeah, sorry, it dropped out for a second. Can you, Mo, can you repeat the, the question? So that way yeah, I can... you want to do a quick comment on the accuracy of uh, predictions and how you ensure the accuracy? Oh, yeah, that's an excellent question. So um, a lot of it is based on the metrics that you choose. So um, for the example, the robot um, example that Mo was demonstrating, our prediction was providing an early indication, you know, several weeks in advance and without any false alarms. But usually there's, I'd say, two or three metrics that you would like to look at. That includes the false alarm rate, which hopefully you would want to be, you know, zero or, or very minimal. And also um, how early of indication um, can you predict ahead of time? And usually for most business objectives, it has to be at least a week ahead of time. So if we're not predicting a week ahead of time and um, then it's not early enough. And also if our false alarm rate is, you know, more than, you know, a, a few, you know, um, over the course of a year, it's probably not satisfactory. But um, the, the solution has been, you know, um, ruled out and, you know, implemented in many different equipment. And, and for at least the templates that we're offering, we feel pretty confident um, on achieving that accuracy. Of course, there is some variation from equipment to equipment. Thank you. Thank you, David. So uh, I also get this question myself sometimes, and uh, also one of our attendees also brought it to our attention. Uh, so on, in terms of connectivity uh, on the production floor, uh, we, have, we, we see sometimes, you know, uh, legacy machinery, uh, you know, uh, these are, you know, nicely running machines, but they are basic legacy machines, right? They are basically old. Uh, so if you like to uh, get uh, data, from these legacy machines. That is a big challenge that we have been hearing all the time and also our attendee also uh, also, also share, you know, asking, asking this question to us. So how do we make sure that uh, any uh, old or legacy uh, machinery can be, uh, can basically generate data uh, in a reliable way? Yeah, I can give a short feedback. So I, I think that's a good question because uh, probably the biggest bottleneck in any analytics project is uh, the connectivity to the plant floor. 
And uh, it's typically due to the fact that a lot of machines are, are quite old, so we cannot get data from the controllers. Uh, probably the machines do not have Ethernet capability. Uh, so we, um, so it is important to instrument the machine, right? So we, for example, have internal know-how, we have an instrumentation team, and we have hardware partners where we can go to a legacy machine, we can identify the tags that are needed to get from the machine. We can instrument it with hardware. Uh, we partner with companies like Advantech, Moxa, National Instruments, and so on and so forth. So we can revive that machine. So rather than retrofitting the machine and paying a lot of money to do that, you can actually instrument the machine with the needed hardware and the sensors and obtain data from very, very, very old equipment. Uh, so I think it's there's a trade-off between the age of the machine and the amount of data you can get from the machine. Uh, but I think with the right instrumentation and the right hardware and the right expertise, uh, those very old machines can be connected very quickly uh, to the network to, to bring data for analytics and, and for maintenance. So that's a good question. Uh, thank you, Mo. I'm, I'm going to be jumping from one question to another, so they may not be related to each other, but I need to, we need to address these uh, questions. So one of the questions that I receive is about uh, mobile apps. So uh, it is for both products. Uh, both for PDX and Beam. So can we use uh, these systems together uh, by using uh, our mobile devices? So um, what would you say, uh, Mo, in terms of using mobile devices to trace, to see the um, health of the machinery, for instance? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, both systems, you know, Predictronics and Beam, you know, they're fully web-based. Uh, they're using latest HTML5 technology. They can run in any browser. And of course, uh, the capability of using a, a phone as an app is possible to visualize the data in real time. Uh, of course, you have to be within your company's network, you know, infrastructure to do that. And also projecting the data on a big end on screen, like a visual display on the plant floor or a big LCD is possible so that the data can be viewed by, by the whole organization and they can use the data very quickly. So I think mobility is critical and uh, having a solution that has a state of the art architecture enables, you know, mobility for both the maintenance system like Beam and the predictive system. Yeah, that's uh, uh, that was a, a good question. Yes, definitely. I mean, both systems can be uh, utilized on uh, on a mobile device, which is a uh, which is uh, which is very practical, very practical. I mean, considering uh, being on the manufacturing floor all day long, not at the desk, uh, having these devices uh, in action is a, is, a, uh, is a great benefit, makes things much easier. Um, let me see, uh, one of the questions that I have is about Beam and uh, PDX together. So uh, how long does the integration take I I for, each, each for these two systems, PDX with uh, Beam? And uh, what is the technology uh, behind it in the integration and how quick uh, can it be integrated and go live? So uh, on on the beam part, on the PDX part, and more, please feel free to jump in anytime you like. Uh, so uh, uh, basically, these uh, two systems are integrated uh, with uh, web service APIs. So uh, just like um, uh, Dr. Siegel and Dr. Aboli uh, presented, um, simply PDX. Uh, remotely monitors the health of the machinery, and uh, when uh, there is a need for the maintenance that's coming out based on the uh, predictive analytics, uh, simply through the uh, web service APIs, uh, PDX triggers Beam for Beam to prepare the spare parts and prepares uh, the um, scheduling as well as assignment to the related maintenance uh, management team. These maintenance team may be in-house or maybe a, a service team could be a subcontractor perhaps. So that can uh, basically be managed with the web service APIs and these systems are already integrated. So deploying them is actually pretty, pretty quick. Uh, would you like to add anything more on top of it? No, that's a good question. Um, I mean, it's definitely a phase approach. Um, I mean, there is always a bi-directional uh, need to integrate predictive analytics with a system like Beam. So maybe in a first phase of deployment, uh, it is one direction where the predictive analytics software is sending information like machine health and, and spare part requests to Beam. So it's a, it's a flow out. But in a future uh, second step, potentially, 
there could be a bidirectional handshake where Beam is also sending the master data, like the list of machines and uh, spare part availability and so on to the predictive system. So I think if we phase out the implementation, this would also accelerate the, uh, the effort and accelerate the use of the products. Great, thank you, thank you, Mo. Uh, another question is about the uh, predictive analytics. So uh, you monitor machinery uh, and uh, based on your uh, predictive analytics uh, technology, how about the conditions, working conditions of the machinery? How does it affect your uh, analytics or, uh, or predictive uh, approach? Good question, yeah. For David. Yeah. 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 I'll take a a, a first um, you know stab at the, addressing this question. So I think it's a, a very good um, perspective. And what we like to say is that predictive analytics can work well, but it's best to have an apple to apples comparison of the data and um, sensor patterns over time. So with that being said, there's kind of two approaches. One is that um, you can um, collect data, uh, even though if the machine is doing many different processes or um, you know, operating conditions, you can collect data on the same operating condition, maybe during a routine test, or maybe when it's, you know, during a certain, certain cycle that you pull out and collect data. And that's actually um, similar to what the um, demo that Mo was um, showing with the robot. In this case, it's collecting data maybe once per shift when the robot is doing a particular motion. So we're always mo uh, monitoring it um, in the same dynamics, the same motion profile. Um, if the machine is, um, um, there's a, also another option to collect data from multiple motion profiles, but then you would just have separate um, baseline model for each um, profile. So you'd still be comparing an apple to apples comparison. Um, there are, I'd say, other approaches to this um, challenge, um, but they're not something that we have not dealt with before, including not just the manufacturing use cases, but also those um, you know, fleet of assets like for mining and construction equipment as well. Thank you, David. Thank you. So um, another thing, actually, that I think uh, we need to address is the compliance, because uh, most of the companies, especially um, food companies, for instance, if uh, to be more specific, so uh, they have uh, predictive maintenance uh, procedures actually in their in their policies when they are complying with um, with SQF or DRC uh, or um, or halal or kosher kind of uh, certifications, basically these standards. So uh, actually deploying this kind of system in terms of predictive analytics, and then also the maintenance, uh, predictive maintenance uh, management is going to be also make it easier for them to comply uh, as well, because uh, you can document the activities, you can perform it, and you can basically measure the results uh, in terms of compliance. Uh, so that's also important to talk about. Um, another question that I have received is about uh, the uh, timeline uh, in terms of duration of the activities. Uh, how long does it take uh, in terms of uh, 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 running projects, for instance, pilots or projects or any other activities? How long does it take to uh, run them? That is the question. Uh, maybe uh, uh, more. You like? Would you like to address this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we it's kind of a four-step process. In the beginning, we do a discovery. So we would visit the client, get to know the requirements, and we would show a more detailed demonstrations and so on. Uh, this would lead to a, uh, a workshop. Uh, so during the workshop, uh, you know, we would architect uh, the solution and create a statement of work for the customer. And then this would lead to the pilot, which we would call a proof of value because there is a uh, a detailed business case behind it, right? So we're deploying technology to deliver a business case. So during a proof of value, uh, typically the software is deployed uh, at no cost, uh, but there is a cost for the services and the training. And we try to keep it minimal. And we would run the pilot for, you know, one to three months. Uh, typically we then have a business case to justify the future investment. And then there will be a, you know, typically a subscription approach uh, to, uh, to the product. So the pilots would run, you know, on average around three months, and uh, we would keep the costs uh, uh, minimal to ensure a business case is delivered to the customer. Yeah. Great. I hope that yes. answers your question. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, I can just uh, add on in terms of uh, Beam. 
uh, it is also actually yeah, pretty quick to quickly deploy. Uh, we also have a demo environment for users to try around if the PDX process is done, of course, in this particular case. And um, yeah, the uh, deployment takes uh, one to uh, three months, three months, depending on the customer's data readiness and availability of the customer's uh, team members for training, basically. So uh, yeah, that's basically important information to share. Uh, another is question that I have received is it is about Beam, so it is questioning. The question is about the spare part management. So uh, spare part management is very important. Uh, is, does the P Beam run standalone, or does it have to work with an ERP system to run the uh, inventory system? That is the question. So I can address that. So first of all, Beam is actually designed to run independently, standalone. Uh, in addition. As I mentioned during my uh, presentation, the system is ready to communicate with any other systems. PDX is one of them that we are communicating with integrations. In addition, uh, we, have, we can communicate with any ERP system, manufacturing execution system, GPS, RFID, and barcode, and so on. So the com communication channels of Beam is all open, simply. And it's also open for the ERP system. So if you have any ERP system running, and if you keep your uh, inventory there, basically ERP will be the uh, master data and Beam will be pulling the uh, master data information onto uh, its, uh, its database, uh, let you use it for the maintenance operations, and once uh, maintenance operation is done and ticket is closed, the recent uh, status of the inventory, spare part inventory, will be sent back to the ERP system to keep it updated. That's a typical uh, way of uh, running this integration with an ERP system. If you do not have an ERP system, and if you like to use the spare part inventory management system on Beam, you are more than welcome to do so, because independently Beam can run and help you manage your uh, spare part uh, inventory to have the optimal uh, optimum level of uh, inventory, uh, simply. Let me see if I have any other questions. Uh, well, our time is literally uh, almost done. Um, I'm also checking my uh, chat box at the same time. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, I have, yeah, I, I think I shared all the questions that I have received. Uh, okay, great. So uh, when we are finishing our uh, webinar, uh, uh, David, uh, uh, Mo, would you like to uh, say uh, anything else in addition to what we talk about? Uh, for my side, no, I just wanna thank you for the opportunity uh, to collaborate with Beam and I think, uh, most maintenance systems, you know, EAM systems are quite traditional in the approach. They are more focused on, you know, improving the process behind maintenance and the spare parts and so on. But our vision with Beam is to have a solution that is artificial intelligence enabled, that is predictive enabled, and that allows, uh, I would say, the use of analytics in a very intuitive way to help uh, maintenance users get the most out of their maintenance system. So really appreciate uh, the opportunity, Kursad. And I'll, I'll hand it to David for some concluding words. No, no, Mo, I think you really hit it on the spot. I think, you know, these types of technologies are really hand in hand and are, you know, great in terms of integrating the solutions together um, because the predictive solution should help you manage your assets better. So it only makes sense to feed the information, you know, to each other system so they can be, you know, enhanced and, and as you mentioned, you know, AI enabled. So I think, uh, thank everyone again for the opportunity and, and we look forward to um, supporting you on your efforts on this, you know, improvement in your maintenance and asset management. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mo. Uh, also, I'd like to uh, uh, thank you for your time and for your insights. Much appreciated. I'd like to take our attendees and our uh, panel. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, our contact information is on the screen at the moment. You can see our phone numbers and you can see our email addresses. Uh, so if you have any the questions or if you'd like to continue the conversation please feel free to contact us we'll be happy to help you and uh, we'd like to thank you for your time and for your interest we look forward to seeing you in our coming webinars thank you and have a nice day